super, super parts rolling today from the mailman. Have this boy, bad boy baking in the sun real quick. Supporting Jeff Bezos out here, even though Juan had to had to quit on him. I know Amazon hurting without my boy Juan in there. Had to get the Amazon sunshade and the steering wheel cover. This thing's testing me. There's no way. Look at that stretch. Wow, holy. That was the hardest steering wheel cover I've ever tried to put on in my life. And I already know someone's gonna comment some technique you're supposed to do and be like, dude, you're supposed to fucking hit the doggy before you put the thing on. Hell no, that thing was like ridiculous. That thing was like half the size. I don't even think it was the right size. Well boys, we got a big old scooter swap shop box right here. And uh, it's time to unbox some parts. This thing's this thing's massive. I'm doing this one on the ground because it's a lot of parts. Man. Alright, let's see what we got. First things first, we got a Yusuni R for the, uh, the Zuma build. Another clutch spring for the stroker. The rack that, if you watched the videos when I was in Portland, I was riding Paul's um, Elite and I looped it in one clip and bent the lip of his rack up. So I sent him my clean one that I had off my purple bike. Got the rack. Oh yeah. Zuma 70 kit. Polini. Clutch bell. 21 mil CP card for the Zuma as well. AF16, crank bearings. Polini adjustable. Springs. Crank seals. Another um, 90 for the throttle for the Zuma. No way, bro. For the purple bike, we got the Arrow. Shout out, Scooter Swap Shop, for sure. Look at that thing, this is the newer one, because I know that they always used to break right here, so this one's supposed to be a little bit stronger. Wow, bro. We're looking like Chuck's parts wall out here, but uh, packaging from the boys over at Scooter Swap Shop. I'm sure you guys already know, they do YouTube too, but uh, make sure you check out their YouTube channel as well um, for more details on like installing the parts. We got a bunch of AF16 stuff just for a fresh build, crank seals. Um, this is actually for the Zuma 90 degree throttle fitting um, for when you run this Polini car because it only comes with the vertical one. I think it actually matters too on the throttle cable length because I think I had a problem where my throttle cable was too long without running this clutch bell. Um, 70 kit for the Zuma, which I'm stoked to see. 2000 center spring for the Dio. Um, we, got, we went with the Yusuni R on the pre-bug right here. And uh, we also got a aero pipe for the purple 72 build um, that's gonna have a Corsa. So we're gonna have a Corsa, aero. Also deciding right now on if I wanna run 9.1 or 8.1 gearing, probably more 8.1. I uh, need to get gears and then um, just a few other little things and it's time to build up the purple bike. So this is also a box with a Metro stem um, from Ruck City, I wanna say the shop's name. Uh, homie hooked it up, uh, got us a Metro stem out here for the SB50 builds. To so the hookup from Ruck City Customs for hooking up with this Metro stem for the SB50 build. And they threw in a beanie and some sick jet tag. Other stuff, he also sandblasted this too. So it came over super, super fresh. I'm excited to see and hear this aero pipe on the 72 um, on the purple bike, so. Definitely need to get some vinyl parts in for that and get that build going ASAP. And we're gonna probably start on the Zuma even sooner than that. The big stage six Manny on there, that's ready. Now we got the Suni R for it. We got the Polini board, which we're about to open up. Um, I just need to figure out trans situation now too. Oh yeah, and we got the carb. And uh, yeah, still wanna do a lot of things to this bike eventually. Um, go with the disc front end, so do the different stem, different legs, uh, put a disc on it. Put different wheels on it, some 12 inch wheels. Actually, it looks a lot better, the exhaust porting on these, compared to how the Corsa came for the Dio. The Dio came with a little lip on the exhaust. This one's like one solid piece coming out. It doesn't look like the flange is a different piece, if you get what I'm saying. And then, uh, no lips at all in here. I guess that little corner right there. 
that little corner, tiny little lip, round that off a little bit. That's where the boy Chuck comes in here and gets really wicked crazy. I kind of want to get crank bearings, crank seals, crank, and then uh, redo the whole motor in one go and make it real clean. So I think this might be on hold until we do it all at once. So you know Vegas is too hot. When your head temp is 94 degrees and you haven't started this bike in weeks. Stroker's having a little bit of an issue right now. Uh, basically, once it gets warmed up, I think these clutch springs are too weak um, to hold up to it because once they're hot, I think they're a little too soft or something. And uh, it's not allowing the bike basically to take off good. Um, the clutch just kind of just falls on its face and the bike's like, it goes from like one or two pulls where it's instant engagement, you're pulling the front wheel up, to like three pulls later once it's hot, you're sitting there and then it takes off like you're like falling on its face. So thinking it's the clutch springs that are in it because it has the stock, not stock, but what came with the Polini adjustable clutch, which are the green springs. My understanding is the yellow Polinis are stronger and then the blue ones are the strongest. I'm gonna go ahead and try just swapping out the springs for now and putting in these stiffer springs to see if we can't get this stroker to feel a whole lot better. Maybe part of the reason is this clutch fell, but I highly doubt it. We'll have to see right now. I just remembered I do not have the big socket. Clean the adjustable is sick because it has these three shoes that are adjustable and it kind of spreads the whole thing out and tightens the springs and pulls them. So to take the springs out, you just loosen it all the way in and the springs pop right out and you can change them easily. Like this, that you can't do that with, it's a pain in the ass to take the springs out because they're at full tension and it's a pain to put them in too. Most of the time you have to use a, uh, a table vise. Swap in these yellow bad boys. And I'm going to set them all for a notch. There's like four notches on each one. Start them all tightness. Actually, I'm going to start them in the mid because it's a stroker and I probably need stiffer springs anyways. So. Alright. Trans back together with the clutch. Back together. I forgot I was cooking chicken over here and burnt my chicken, man. Let's see how she's tasting, nice and crispy at least. So boys, it definitely helped a lot. The bike's still warm right now and it's all right from a dead, but it still needs a lot more grab. So we definitely need blue springs. And definitely could use some carb tuning by the feel of that right there. Yep, there. There, did it. So watch now. It's like it's slipping. It's a little better, but yeah, it's still pretty bad. Did not sound good in there. See how it just randomly snaps like that?
is going on in here? We're about to pull this case back, cover back off. Let's see what's going on. It's not good, boys. It's not the roller, so it's nothing I just messed with. Well, what is that mysterious noise? It's not like metal on metal. I made my motor melt. I think I just found the issue. I was tripping because I knew it wasn't motor wise because I couldn't feel it in the bike, but I can hear it when I let off. I don't know if you can even hear it on the GoPro. So it sounded almost like the rollers were like shaking around, like the rollers got loose or something. I was thinking maybe that I broke the um, the ramp guides, I guess you'd call them right here. I was thinking I broke those again and then the ramp plate was just rattling. That's kind of what it sounded like. And then I just looked in here. See, so see right there where that little hole is? Look right there. Oh. Can you see? See that? It looks like my fan exploded in there. Wow. Look at that. Holy. Well, now I need a Honda F16 fan. So, um, on the look for that. And I gotta trim down the fan shrouds that the boy Chuck keeps telling me because it's messing up. I mean, I got trimmed down the head so my fan shots actually fit because that's what keeps messing up. But uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this one. Fix the stroker and we have to get some more parts in on the way for that. So until next time, see you guys in the next one.